think I may have made a big mistake taking two bottles of beers with me. Next time, a small little bottle of whiskey. Wow, what a night. Um, where do I start? Last night I was up, up on the hill. I'd set camp, I had my dinner. I sat down with a nice beer, relaxed after a, must have been a three hour hike up uh, with my backpack, which was quite heavy. I think I've put a bit too much in there. In hindsight, I should have left the beer. <laughs> um, Anyways, then I went out, tried to find the dot roll up there. Just had a golden plover. And yes, this is this is socks on my head. It's a bit cold and I left my gloves in the car. And a mist came in really quickly and all of a sudden I could barely see about five to ten meters ahead of me. But just before that I had seen one um, I had seen one golden plover, which is up there. I could hear it whistle first, and I got sight of it. And it's a really cool looking bird, and I wanted to photograph that as well. But along with the mist and the rain that came in right after, I just didn't have a chance for any photography that evening. So I went back into my tent, and about, I don't know, what was it? 9.30, so half an hour before sunset, the wind was getting really strong. Like I was, the tent was kind of hugging my side um, as I was lying down. I checked the wind on the, the weather report and that I had another 20 miles per hour winds stronger facing me in the middle of the night at about three or four in the morning. So I figured I was very exposed up there as well. It was shelter when I set up camp. I felt like it, but I think the wind shifted a little bit. And this is my own rookie, inexperienced mistake. Um, I definitely should have checked the weather better before I went up. I just checked the, the weather reports, sun, wind, you know, I was expecting rain and I was expecting some showers and maybe some bad weather. I just didn't think that the wind would get that strong. Uh, and I don't think that the tent would have lasted at all. I, either it would have come off its... Uh, little plugs and it would, I would have, it would have wrapped around me in the middle of the night which I did not want or worse it would get picked up by the wind and dr try and drag me down the side of the hill so at about quarter to 10 or maybe 10 o'clock yeah probably 10 o'clock I got all my stuff packed down and I realized I just have to make myself back down at least somewhere sheltered and I'm glad I did, because even that first steep hill, there was a wind tunnel uh, coming over. It was like a kind of a gap before the steepest hill up top. And the wind was getting so strong there that I had struggled standing up because it was, it was pulling me down. Because I was uh, partly because I had the big backpack on me as well, so it was a lot of a lot of me to catch. That was a scary 20-minute <laughs> walk down that. And I managed to do the rest of the hill quite fast, and it wasn't too bad then. So in the end, I managed to walk all the way back to the car, and I put, pitched the tent up in the dark, uh, right next to the car. And the air in my mattress has gone off. It's gone bust over the last year. I haven't checked it. Such a rookie mistake. <laughs> I'm just falling into the one silly mistake after the other. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to wait with the dot roll for a little bit because there's no way. I mean, my legs are pretty pretty shaky after last night, and my back is just hurting a bit after hurting a bit after that backpack up and down. So I'm not gonna go up again there today. Plus, it's really windy still, so it's not something I want to do anyways.
I'm in this pa Caledonian pine forest just outside of Border Garden and there's a lot of bird activity here, there's a lot of crested tits. We just had a chaffinch come a little bit further down. This is good enough for a photo, I'm quite happy with the photo I got because it started to rain a bit as well, so I got the streaks of rain in the background. Um, but still a little bit taken at an up, upward angle. Ideally, I want them a little bit lower in my eye level so I can um, get up more of a straight on image. I can still hear loads of stuff about right here, so I'm going to hang out a bit more and just see if I can get lucky. Amazing to walk around in these forests when things actually come down to eye level. I've been here in this little spot now for quite some time, maybe close to an hour. And most of what I've had though is chaffinch, but still, some really, I really like putting them in their environment and getting these pine needles kind of half out of focus in the background. about 20 past 5 now and I've just been driving around quite a bit it's been very harsh lights so I haven't really been able to take any any kind of photos and I've checked out some locks but they are they've been so exposed and it's so windy so they've been very very choppy and I haven't even I wasn't able to see anything in it Luckily there's just enough wind to keep the midges off. I can sit outside here, enjoy my one beer, and do some reading, do some thinking and planning about what I do tomorrow. truly snuggle in here. I got loads of warm clothes with me. This is the first day after I first came up here that is not incredibly windy like it was the first time. And I'm just gonna get going, try and find some of these birds up here. So hard to see from the moment we arrived. Bye. 
It is really nice to be here this early. There's, I haven't met a single person. But it's such a nice walk. Such a nice thing to do in the morning. And for, in terms of wildlife, in terms of birds and mammals, there's not many species that call this kind of habitat their home. But there is a couple. So far though, I can hear Metapit is singing around me. There's been the occasional red grouse flying across and making their quite distinctive call. Uh, top of my list though is Dotterel. Dotterel, golden plover, ptarmigan, mountain hare perhaps. I'm glad I did this because the fresh air and just getting up here for a walk in the morning is just a nice experience in itself. Alright, weather has definitely turned a bit worse and it's been pouring down in the last half hour. I've come quite far up as so maybe you can see behind me here. And I almost walked onto a ptarmigan down there. I was so busy looking ahead, scanning ahead, and then five meters ahead of me there was one. But luckily I managed to just completely freeze, get down low, get a couple of shots before it flew off. Such a cool experience. just been rained off the hill. I've been up there for a few hours now and it's got really bad weather. A lot of mist, a lot of fog coming in and a lot of rain. Uh, I've come back down to the parking lot now and there's a ring easel down here. I'm just watching it from a distance just now. I'm hoping it's going to come a bit closer. But I didn't get much up on the hill unfortunately. No doctorals, none of the other stuff I was hoping for. A few ptarmigans and a few ptarmigan photos. It was just you know, a few hours just pouring down up there. It was still a good walk. It was still a good morning walk though, definitely. I still enjoyed it. But this here has definitely lifted my spirit to see in this ring eagle. Let's see if we can get some photos. Witnessed some amazing behavior where two of the young ones, there's a young one over there now, two of the young ones coming really close and the adult is feeding them. Absolutely amazing behavior she's witnessed that close and getting some photos of it. Alright, camp is set. It's gonna take a little evening stroll. The light is still here. Let's see if I can't take any photos. Maybe of some of the songbirds that are here. I'd love to get a siskin, they're so colorful. A part of me is a little bit disappointed with the days that I've had here in the Kieran Gorms house. I think I was expecting to see and photograph a lot more than what I did. And then another part of me is thinking, no, I think I did. This is, this is what's expected, you know? Not everything is gonna be there all the time in wildlife photography. Even though you're in an amazing location, it's not always gonna work out. And by saying that though, I'm actually quite happy with some of the photos that I did get on the few occasions that I saw some wildlife. 
I got a really interesting question by Fred in a recent video about what is my goal with wildlife photography because pretty much every picture that I can possibly take is going to have been taken better by somebody else harsh but true uh, that's so true because there's so I mean so many people out there doing wildlife photography and there's some amazing stuff being created every day so what is the what is the point of it? Like for me, definitely, it's the it's the connection with nature. It's the it's the kind of meditative state that I get in when I'm out and about in nature, and especially if I'm if I have like you know it all comes together. You know, you get the good light, you get the some amazing animal there in front of you, and and then you put in the work. You know, because there's also there's also quite a lot of experience to actually take a good photo you know so you put in that work and you're getting better at a skill so there's all those things coming together and you just really feel kind of in the flow when you're out there well, that's it that's for me anyways uh, so it's not really i don't think it's about any goal per se well a part of me and i think every one of us has that little feeling that you know what you know, you put in enough work, you work at this long enough, and, and you you get better, you take even more and more images. Just maybe, maybe you could get, you know, an award-winning image or something that really means a lot to you. Although I think that all of us create work that means a lot to us, ourselves, all the time. And that's part of why we do it as well. Like, it means something to us, and, it, um, and we get it, and it's... Uh, there's a memory in time that you get to take with you. It's a weird one. I know with um, with birds, out bird watching, just seeing a bird, I I can remember things. I can remember places that I've been to years ago that I saw, like the first time I saw a blue throat. We were hiking up in Tomsø, actually in Norway, to a glacier, and we were looking out for the blue throat and uh, with my girlfriend Alex, and we did see it. Uh, and I remember the experience so vivid. And I get that with nature and with wildlife photography as well. And of course with photography, you actually get to take an image and keep it forever. So, uh, mostly though, it's getting out into nature and you, know, you kind of forget about all the, all the other stuff that's going on in your life. You're just out there and you're in the zone. And there's also the fact that you're, you know, you're getting better, you're getting better at your craft. Um, even if you can't compare to the best wildlife photographers in the world, that really doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> you do it for, for the love of it, basically. Like I said in a previous video, I just got into running. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying trail running. Oh, I was running on this path actually here earlier today. And I could never see myself in the past actually running for pleasure or running a marathon. But now I actually could. But I have no intentions of trying to win a marathon. It would purely be for the love of it. And I think that is the same with wildlife photography. So I hope that answers, I hope that answers your question, Fred. I uh, don't know if it does. Uh, it's good. To, uh, it's a really good one, a really interesting one. I'd be very interested to hear if anybody else has any other reasons why. Why do you do wildlife photography? Um, when in all likelihood, you're not going to be the best. There's always going to be somebody better. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Get inspired to maybe go out and do some wild camping and wildlife photography yourselves. And. Thank you so much for everybody subscribing, commenting, liking these videos. I absolutely love it. And it makes it, in a weird way, it makes it easier to do things like this. It has a little bit of the accountability to you guys. I say, I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna look for doctorals. Of course, I didn't see any doctorals, but oh well. Uh, so, yeah, thank you guys for being there and holding me accountable for doing these things. Till next time. See ya.
Been bad.